Public seeks to don Ulo was in court and he uh, would bring some more light on what transpired and the implications and uh, other matters. Six is welcome to the city newsroom. Uh, yeah, so uh, a good day in court for the uh, plaintiff and, 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 and his, and his uh, counsel. Well, we have to be careful how we use the expression a good day in court. Um, it will depend on uh, where, you are, where you stand and, and how you are looking at it from. But obviously, I agree with you. A good day for Michael and Kuman Infa and uh, lawyer Frank Davis and the NPP. This is a good day for them. And, and obviously, the Attorney General. The Attorney General has consistently advocated in court that this was uh, the, the long-standing position of the law, uh, that if you get into the office of a member of parliament through unconstitutional means you should not be allowed to remain in that office that has been his argument consistently um, in court uh, but it is obviously and definitely not a good day for uh, James Jachikwesen and the NDC uh, this effectively means that the NDC also if you come down to the politics of it they are down by one um, let's say, thankfully, Parliament is on recess and they may not need the numbers now, but you can never tell what would happen in the future. There may be the need to um, reconvene the House out of recess for some emergency business to be transacted and they would need those, those, those numbers. So, of course, it's, it's a good day, bad day, depending on where you are looking at it from. And so between now and the time that the substantive matter would be um, discussed, or, or determined by the court, the people of Asin North would have to go without um, an elected member of parliament. Do we have a clear idea as to when the, the substantive case itself will be heard? What timelines are we working with here? We do not have a clear case as of yet. The only directive from the court that we have now is that the, the, the parties are to file their a memorandum of issues on, on the substantive matter before the 25th of April, if they are not able to agree on what issues, the, the, the issues are simply the questions of law that you are inviting the, the court to answer. Whether um, uh, James Jechikwesin was um, uh, owed allegiance to uh, 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 another country or another state um, bes besides Ghana, it's, it's that question that the court would be the, the court would be invited to answer bordering on Article 94.2 of the Constitution 1992. And so between now and 25th, uh, and when the issues are expected to be filed, we still cannot tell exactly how or when the, the case would be, would be dealt with. Again, um, the indication we have from this is that the case has been adjourned uh, indefinitely. So until such time that the, the parties have filed their issues, and the 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 the, the court has been re empaneled to to hear those issues um, as it stands now we cannot tell exactly when that would be done okay now i mean for those who are watching uh, this is the the ruling was on the injunction talk to us about a substantive case what exactly is that about james jechi question came to the supreme court with two applications the first one was for That's my Yes, Michael Ankman, if I, I beg your pardon, came to the Supreme Court with two applications that um, the Supreme Court should interpret Article 94.2 of the Constitution. This article talks about um, um, holding office, what should bar you from, from, from holding the, the, the office of a member of parliament and other sensitive offices, specifically talking about um, owing allegiance to Ghana and other countries. So before you get to occupy an office like the Member of Parliament, the Office of the Member of Parliament, you should have demonstrated that you do not owe allegiance to any country other than Ghana. And, and, and that is what the, the matter borders on. Uh, from the very onset, and indeed even the angle of the case, the criminal angle of this case that is pending before the High Court, the question remains whether at the point that Mr. James Jechikwesen picked up his nomination forms to contest for the, 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 the seat of Asin North on the ticket of the, the NDC, whether he was or he owed allegiance to any other country besides Ghana. That's, that's the, the legal question to be answered here. And that is the matter that is pending before the court. So this injunction was only to, in the meantime, put James Jechikwesen out of office 
just to ensure that um, the, 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 as, as the Attorney General and the lawyers for um, Michael Ankuman in fact put it, to ensure that there is no constitutional aberration that the people of Asin North are not taken for granted. Now, I mean, the ruling was 5-2 uh, majority, uh, I mean, I believe. Uh, uh, how different is this ruling from other, you know, um, I mean, rulings uh, related to this particular case? Well, we, we, have, we, have seen, we have seen in instances where um, decisions have been taken unanimously. Um, in this particular case, we have seen a majority decision. What that simply means is that um, two of the seven-member panel did not agree that um, James J.T. Kwesin should be barred from representing the people of Asin North whilst the, the, the matter is heard. James J.T. Kwesin, the other two people, we still don't know exactly how they reasoned on this matter. Indeed, the rest of the court, we don't know exactly how they reasoned on this matter. All we know is that this is the decision that they have made. But as to what informed the decision, we still don't know. We will get to know that later. So in this particular case, we have seen um, her ladyship, Agnes Doji, dissenting. We have seen um, his, his lordship, Nene Amegache, dis dissenting. What that means is that the president of the court, Jones Doche, uh, uh, Yoni Kulendi Emmanuel, uh, his lordship, um, um, her ladyship, Gertrude Tokono, I'm, I'm trying to recollect all the names of, of the members of the, of the panel. All of them, there were five of them in all, they all agreed. Um, her ladyship, Mariama Ousu, Professor Henrita Mensa Bonsu, they all agreed that in the interest of justice, um, Mr. James J.T. Kwesin should step aside or step down as the Member of Parliament for Asin North whilst the substantive uh, matter is heard. Like I said, we do not know exactly how and why they arrived at that conclusion. We will get to know that later on when they, they, they file their reasons at the court registry. Now, does this bring finality to the uh, call for him to be restrained, or is there room for appeal, if you can educate us? Uh, this is um, an equitable remedy. Um, as it stands now, like we said, it is, it, is, it is only in the interim. And this is a discretionary remedy. In other words, the court had a discretion. This is, this is, this is a ruling that the court gives out of its um, magnanimity and its own reasoning. So I, I'm wondering how you would have difficulty with something that the court can choose to decide either ways. You get it. But it is not the end of the matter, you know, that for, for what it's worth. It's not the end of the matter. It's not the finality to the matter. No. It is possible, it is possible that after all of this, we would, we would see James Yechikwesin back in office as the Member of Parliament. But of course, as we have seen the uh, plaintiff applicant in this matter, who is uh, Michael Ankuma Ninfa, his lawyers in, 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 hint at every turn, there is the, the advocacy or the push for the Electoral Commission to strictly work with the judgment of the High Court, by which judgment it would mean that the EC would have to immediately move into um, Asin North, immediately move into Asin North and conduct a by-election. But all of these are things that we cannot say, you know, with a straight jacket that it is going to go this way. So there's the push for a by-election immediately based on the high court judgment and based on uh, uh, what they would see as an affirmation by the Supreme Court. Uh, but then again, there are other processes that are ongoing which, in the interest of justice, they may just want to hold on uh, with, with that push. But, of course, all these are decisions that uh, lie with, with other authorities. I mean, I mean, not to uh, belabor the point, but can you remind us of when it's been adjourned to and, and, and also delve deeper into the numbers game you know, in Parliament and what the implications will be for you know, like, like the various sides? It, this case has been adjourned indefinitely. Indefinitely because the parties have been directed to file their, their, their submissions the, 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 on the substantive matter by the 25th of April. Until that is done, the court is constrained, cannot move on. 
this was just a peripheral issue the the this application injunction application that has been granted it was a peripheral issue even though it has huge ramifications okay so this means that it only gives the court time to be able to look into the substantive matter so as it stands now we do not know when the the the, the court would, would be empaneled again to look into the substantive matter that's number one Number two, on the, the numbers game, this again delves a blow on the NDC side. That means that this is minus one for the NDC. Know that the nature of the current parliament, numbers is everything. Is everything. So NDC had 137, uh, one, one, uh, and NPP 137 plus an independent candidate joining, uh, independent member, sorry, taking sides with the NPP to form the majority group. Now, the, if there, there was any vote on the floor of the House, as we have seen in the time past, this came down to how many members each side could marshal. And this is why the decision that allowed a, a, a deputy speaker presiding to f be part of the quorum formation and to also vote was so critical that it, it, it did not take away from the NPP's numbers in Parliament, even if a deputy speaker was presiding. Now, imagine that there's a matter in Parliament. A deputy speaker who is a member of the, the majority group is presiding. The NPP in, or the majority in Parliament still maintain their numbers. But that is 138. But the NDC is down by one. So James Jechikwesen would not be in Parliament to cast his vote. That means that the NDC, that is the minority group, would be losing by one vote. That means that they are down already. Okay, so I, the point I made was that it is only maybe good for the minority group that this decision has come at a time that the House is on recess and they may not really feel the impact that much, except where the House has been compelled to come out of recess to take a decision or to, to, to make decision on a particular issue, which is something that I'm not sure would happen anytime soon. But if this issue is not resolved before the House gets back from recess, it means that the, the, NP, the NDC would be working with one down going forward until a determination is made.